knocked in. The vault continues, and a triple kill comes through. Make One that kill. a quadra kill for Hui. Oh, going for, for it for this time, and a penta kill for Hui. After all, on the Quinn. Beautiful game. That's gonna be the nexus. That's gonna be the game. Twelve. Valor. This is a story that I've wanted to tell for a very long time. There's not too much more I can say about this champion other than one thing. If there was ever a champion in League of Legends that doesn't feel like it belongs, or doesn't feel like they can find their true identity or spot, it might just be Quinn. Rarely does a champion have this many design flaws and problems, yet Quinn is still loved by her community. A history that is unlike most other champions, one that is rooted in both extreme success and failure, to be the most interesting I've ever covered. This is her story. From the very beginning, Quinn's story is different than most others because she started out as a cancelled champion. This is Eagle Rider. We've had quite a few cancelled champions over the years for various reasons, but typically champion development cycles go smooth enough that they can actually be released. Sometimes though, like in the case of Elise, they end up becoming a champion later on, but use a similar theme to one of the cancelled champions. Elise would eventually just become what Priscilla was supposed to be originally. Eagle Rider was this Viking Nordic style bird guy who looks pretty cool if you ask me, and according to this article written by Media Vita, we first saw him leaked around October of 2010. Interestingly, this is one of the few cancelled champions that we basically have no information on other than his picture. There's no abilities, there's no gameplay, no lore, nothing. Eventually, the design of Eagle Rider would be split up into two different champions, Olaf and Quinn. Quinn would be released on March 1st, 2013, and from the champion spotlight, already we learn one of the most important details about her design. She was, at least in Riot's eyes, designed to be a marksman for the bot lane as expected. Although her kit resembled a marksman, and she was being marketed as an ADC, it was clear her kit was different. The original Quinn, at least compared to the one that we have now, was much more like a shapeshifter style champion, in line with Jace, Nidalee, and Elise. What was different about Quinn compared to the other shapeshifters though, is that she was not given the ability to change form as often as she liked. Instead, her ultimate was more like a normal alt with a more normal cooldown. Shortly after the release of Quinn, Bishu, who was a former NALCS mid laner in support, talked to Dignitas in an article discussing the game, and one of the questions to the pro player was about his thoughts on the new champions Thresh and Quinn. Now keep in mind, this article was only posted 8 days after her release, but you could already see the way that players felt about her. As he quotes, Quinn feels very awkward for me. She's designed as an AD carry, but her kit falls off very hard late game. Her ult becomes very useless at the late game mark, and her dash leaves her very vulnerable. I played Quinn at mid lane and was actually very successful, because it was really easy to harass opponents down with her dash, however I'd much rather play another AD carry, like Graves or Caitlyn, who does a much better job, yet still scales well. From basically week one, there was just something about Quinn that was wrong, and as Bishu so elegantly put it, awkward. Tag Team was Quinn's original R ability, and this is where the problems start. Quinn was originally designed as a sort of assassin AD carry. It was a risky choice by Riot, but because she's not designed for the normal LOL meta, and never really has been, it means that there isn't a role that she can fit into a standard team composition. Of course, some players love the fact that Quinn was so unique and different, but that comes with problems. Her original alt forced her into melee range when most AD carries want distance. The reworked ultimate, which we will get into later, changed Quinn's partner into what Quinn players like to joke about now, a taxi. Quinn may have needed more interaction with Valor, not less, and it's questionable with the rework if they should have pushed her to be more of a traditional shapeshifter rather than a hypermobile ranged assassin. 
It's also weird that they went with the less interaction between Quinn and Valor approach with the rework, considering that in the original Champion Spotlight, and around the time of her release, the name of the champion was actually Quinn and Valor. That's the name that Freak uses over and over again, similar to how Nunu and Willump are today. Welcome to the League of Legends Champion Spotlight, featuring Quinn and Valor, Demacia's Wings. Quinn and Valor can chase down fleeing prey or escape from sticky situations. I recommend building Quinn and Valor with a primary focus on physical damage output. Barrier, Cleanse, and Flash are great summoner spells for Quinn and Valor. It's a shame, too, because Quinn is a unique concept for a duo champion, and the fact that she was not your traditional ADC meant that some players were a big fan of her, but so much of her kit just does not make sense in the bot lane, which is where Quinn developed a second home, one that would end up being her main role several years later, and the bane of your existence, top lane. Wild Bishu made the point that only 8 days after her release she was a better mid laner, a role different from AD carry, I found something even more telling about the original state of Quinn. On Nerf Please, there was an article written one day after her release, talking about how she was weak as an ADC and better for top lane. At least by their initial impressions, it only took players one day to consider her more of a top laner, which is just shocking, even if it was only this one article. On top of the reasons that you know nowadays, back then Quinn Top was better for other reasons too. Because Quinn was so underplayed, people didn't know how to play against her, and the old Quinn had a real blind on her Q, very similar to Teemo, which as you know, facing Teemo hundreds of times at this point, is kinda really annoying. In general, League of Legends also had clarity problems back then. You know that nice, big, bold text that pops up to tell you you're about to die and says, hey, you're stunned? Well, back in Season 3, if you remember, it was hard to know sometimes exactly how long you were CC'd for, and that extended over to Quinn's blind. Sometimes players would flash in, try to kill you, and not realize that, hey, I'm still blinded. After a nice few buffs following her release, such as finally giving her E an interrupt, Quinn Top seemed like the best place to take her. But that's not really saying much because the quote best place to take her, considering that Quinn ADC was so darn weak, didn't mean it was all that good. Nearly every single thing that I find about this champion's history during those years was how she had an identity problem, an underloaded kit, and underpowered numbers. After hours of looking through anything online I could find from the years 2013 and 2014, I couldn't find one person saying that Quinn is overpowered or strong in the meta or a popular and useful champion. The only positive thing that they have to say about the champion is that she's not good, but she's not as bad as a solo laner. Towards the end of 2014, Meddler and the boys at Riot looked into some Quinn changes that ultimately didn't go through, but it's further proof that she was on their radar and they knew that the state of Quinn was a problem. Finally, in 2015, we would be expecting some much needed changes for Quinn. 2015 was an interesting year, and the biggest highlight from Season 5 was the new jungle and the new summoner's rift map. I like to think that the year 2015 was the beginning of the modern era of League of Legends. I like to think of 2009 to 2010 as the testing years. While it's true that it wasn't always in alpha or beta stages by the end of 2010, the game was still so new that it had many kinks and strategies to be worked out. 2011 to 2014 was the golden era, or the good old days as so many of you would say. The meta of a fighter top, a jungler, a mage or assassin carry mid, and a marksman support duo bot lane was cemented during the early years, and the map, graphics, and items were much more classic League of Legends. Lastly, for the past 5 to 6 years we've had Modern League from 2015 to 2020. The map was updated, there were multiple mass texture rebalancing updates to make the graphics look nicer, and the jungle update to implement Krugs, Raptors, and Scuttle are all still the same group of jungle monsters that we see today, no more Wraiths and no more Golems. You can tell what era you're in by thinking about what champions came out during that time, as in 2015 we got several champions that still could have been released today and felt modern and cool. If King came out for the first time tomorrow, I very much doubt that a ton of people would say the champion looks old and outdated, almost like it was designed for a much older game, yet at this point Kindred is nearly 5 years old now. Thankfully for our girl Quinn, Riot took a long hard look at her back in 2015 and decided enough is enough and we need to update our game to be modern so we have to update and address the older and problematic champions.
Quinn's rework is one of the most confusing ones ever for me. Because on one hand, they did something completely correct on paper. The champion had an identity problem, so they gave her an identity. Before she had no way to stand out other than being objectively the worst ADC in the game, so they gave her something useful and unique. They gave her a clear playstyle. Quinn was to become the premier roaming champion. They also addressed the problem that her ultimate wasn't very good for an ADC as it forced you into melee range, so they scrapped the idea altogether and made it so the ultimate was just a utility one to help you roam. It's not a directly combat ultimate. Already, in theory, it feels like they changed the champion just by changing her ultimate and fixed so many problems. You add in some super nice quality of life buffs, like allowing her to get a passive proc with her E and her Q, bug fixes aplenty, and adjusting her numbers over all these years, and it feels like this should have been a knock-up job. So what's wrong here? Quinn's issues are that her ultimate is just a nightmare to play against. Quinn only has two combat abilities, and each one is only good against a certain type of champion. E is very weak versus ranged champions, and Q is weak against some melee champions who can circumvent its effects. What ends up happening is that Quinn can only thrive when she's able to get really far ahead and abuse her lead with a toxic flowchart playstyle where you run around the map and kill the enemy team. As if Rengar wasn't already enough. I really like the way that Quinn AD put it when he told me his thoughts on Quinn. When Quinn is good, it's because an item change has given her the ability to spike really hard off of just one item and then dominate the map. When that's not the case, she basically doesn't exist outside of being a strong counterpick if a champion that she dumpsters is strong in the meta. He notes that Quinn is tough to balance because her numbers are forced to be low, otherwise she can be game-breaking. She has an ultimate that allows her to roam around the map, as well as being an ADC who scales quite well and is one of the best 1v1 duelists in the game, which is just a recipe for disaster. If Quinn is ever strong, there is not really a way to stop her. What are you going to do if she starts 5-0 and zero in lane, which isn't unreasonable considering that she dumpsters melee champions top lane? It's because of those low numbers that then causes her worst matchups to be even worse than normal. Most champions can make it through their bad matchups if they have good base stats and decent sustain, but Quinn has neither. Meaning that if she starts the game at 0-5 instead of 5-0, and zero, she then becomes a useless marksman that doesn't scale as well as Vayne, so you would have been better off picking Vayne top instead. But what about the times where Quinn is strong? The peak times of Quinn came at different moments during 2016, 2017, and 2018. Interestingly, this is a story that I'm calling the Three Spikes. If you take a look at her history for win rate, popularity, and ban rate, you will notice something cool and uniform between all three of them. There are three big spikes. Let's begin with the first one back in 2016. Shortly after the rework, she became insanely strong. It was way more streamlined that she could become a solo laner with her new ultimate, the ability to roam all around the map gave her some new map impact, and something that has made her such a strong top laner is that she doesn't need teleport to have success. It essentially gives her one more damage spell, since you know that you can almost always take Ignite. The amount of damage she provided with the new Ghostblade, as well as Thunderlord's Decree becoming the best keystone in the game, made her an unstoppable champion for solo queue. Competitive play was of course a bit less prominent than solo queue, but definitely her numbers were still there, rocking about 75 bans and picks, and even holding a positive win rate, and if you remember, Huni would get a pentakill on Quinn in the NALCS. Although strong in competitive play, what made headlines back in Season 6 was just how disgusting she was in solo queue. So the Renekton only was playing her a ton, Donghwap made a video about why Quinn is so broken in Season 6, and it was universally accepted that this rework was kinda nutty. She could even be picked more often in mid and jungle, which were two roles that she could play here and there before the rework, but because she was so overpowered, she found herself popping up consistently in three different roles. This would force Riot to nerf her. On 6.6, .6, we saw a decently big hit, which at first doesn't look too bad, but because you maxed Q first, a 2 second longer cooldown at level 9 was pretty important. As you can see, around this time she started to fall off a bit, which mostly covers the story of Spike number 1. She would slowly fade out of the meta after a nerf and a small meta shift, so we can move on to Spike number 2. Enter Duskblade of Drakthar. Well, more specifically, patch 7.14. 
A lot of you will probably remember the lethality update, and if you played at the time, everyone just started running around like chickens with their head cut off, spamming Talon, Zed, Riven, and Jace. If your champion was AD, you picked up lethality items. Simple as that. The typical bruisers and assassins you might expect were very good with the item, but there were a couple of ranged champions taking lethality as well. Jin would become a staple pick in the meta, Misfortune would be seen with these items, and Varus would take it for months and almost never be seen with an attack speed build for about an entire year later. And then there's Quinn. Turns out that Quinn is an assassin, a ranged champion, with incredible mobility, who's also a D. Oh, okay, I, I guess that does explain a 70% win rate. Jokes aside, she was on top of the world for solo queue in terms of win rate, but it didn't feel as overpowered as the previous year, even though her win rate was higher because everything around her was also crazy that patch. Plenty of other AD assassins and lethality abusers were the ones that everyone wanted to talk about, and they were seeing more competitive play and attention from the community. That's not to say that no pro players were giving her a try, as there are VODs from pro players picking up some Quinn top over the next couple of patches, but I guess their thought was that she wasn't strong enough for pro, as she received no competitive picks for all of 2017. So let's move on to Spike 3. This is the time in which Quinn's popularity reached an all-time high, but it wasn't even her most overpowered time or the time in which she saw the highest win rate. Funny enough, she ended up coming full circle by surprisingly making it back to the bot lane. Between the patches 8.11 and 8.12, we would get a famous video from Tyler1. Yo, I have a question about the Aatrox rework. Uh, can you guys PLEASE Items. The day Riot ruined ADCs would become a day that many of you would remember. In the span of just a couple of weeks, the meta turned completely on its head and did a 180 from shielding and ardent supports buffing up crit users like Caitlyn and Twitch, to now a wacky and unique mage and bruiser bot lane. The nerfs to crit items were brutal, and the nerfs to shielding supports might have even been worse. The ADC specifically reliant on crit, like Caitlyn, became some of the worst champions in the game. Now we had Vladimir's and Aurelius taking over the bot lane, and in light of ADCs being generally weak, this left one question on everyone's mind. What about Quinn? Here's the interesting part, it had been so long after her rework at this point that she was now finally classified as a solo laner. Riot did not nerf her directly with the rest of the marksmen. Graves, Corky, and Quinn were the other ones not hit by these base stat nerfs, and because Quinn could build items that weren't crit, like lethality, she wasn't even hit that hard. In addition, the one new crit item that was good synergized super well with Quinn as she could easily build Storm Razor first item, and finally, after all these years, she was a competitive and strong marksman. It did not take very long for two huge names in League of Legends to pick up Quinn. Sneaky, one of the most popular professional players in any esport at the time, who not only played her in LCS, but also on stream, and of course, Tyler1. After basically rage quitting his famous Draven, Tyler 1's challenger Quinn streams became a fan favorite, as the marksman who everyone always said was terrible finally became popular and a strong meta champion. As he climbed higher and higher, more players adopted Quinn, and he would eventually peak as high as top 10 challenger, almost entirely picking Quinn to do so. On back-to-back -back patches, Riot would nerf her in response to decent success at the pro level and very good success in challenger solo queue. She was able to consistently hold as high as a 55 or 56% win rate, but after some ADCs got reverted, crit items were buffed, months later the ardent shielding supports got some love back, and bruisers and non-traditional bot laners would be phased out, so Quinn of course left the meta and bot lane for good. Truly, Quinn has not been good for nearly two years since the days of Tyler1, and there's a pretty good reason why. Quinn is one of the champions that, in her current state, is nearly impossible to buff. 
Think about what Quinn does and what she offers for a team. She has a very good early game, especially the laning phase for mid and top lane. She has a strong mid game where she can roam around the map and get some kills, and her late game is good considering she's an ADC. She has to be at least pretty good late game. But that's all in theory. Those things have to be individually cut down on a case by case basis because Quinn is a jack of all trades in terms of the game time, but has mastered the art of roaming as well. She's one of the few champions that does everything well, and one thing specifically super well. Also, if Quinn was ever put to a state where she can be played in competitive, you know how much of a problem that would be because she can play four roles viably, and she can run the most keystones out of any champion in the game. No other champion can viably play four roles and use as many keystones in build diversity as Quinn. At first, it seems like a positive and a good thing that she can be so diverse and have so many unique and interesting options, but it also means that Quinn seriously lacks definition. Other ranged top laners like Jace, Lucian, and Kalista have been seen over the last couple of years in competitive play because they have incredibly strong early games that allow them to shut down counter matchups, but Quinn isn't allowed to have the same early game that she did in Season 6 because we saw how that turned out for solo queue. Quinn isn't allowed to have actual marksman numbers because we can remember what it was like in 2018, and Quinn is not allowed to have a super strong item like Duskblade because we saw what happened in 2017. After all of the research done for this video and talking to all of the Quinn mains, I think I can conclude one main thing. The champion is neglected because she is truthfully so poorly designed. She's a League of Legends champion who reminds you how unfair and cruel life really is. It's not the Quinn main's fault that they love their champion, that's not on them. And it's not Quinn's fault that she's so toxic for the game. And on top of all of that, is it really Riot's fault? Sure, they put her in the game, they reworked her, sure. And they've even nerfed and buffed her over the years, and none of us have coded anything or designed anything for the champion. But at the same time, what's the answer? What's the solution? Ignoring a problem doesn't fix a problem, and it doesn't make it go away, but it shouldn't make it worse. She's a champion that is kind of doomed. She's set up for failure. But interestingly, knowing all of that, there's something pretty cool happening to Quinn right now. At the time of recording, Quinn is kind of doing well. The buff to Sanguine Blade, as well as the buff to her Q, has allowed her to potentially thrive. She isn't broken, and she isn't top tier, but she's probably in her best spot since 2018. With Sanguine Blade, she has an easy to build first item that allows her to get the snowball rolling. Her pick rate has doubled over the last couple of patches, and she currently has the second highest win rate for top lane on U.GG. Is there any hope for this champion? Sure, a bit. Is it likely that she will also become problematic once again? Yeah, it's possible. But what I love so much about her and League of Legends is that these guys, these hardcore Quinn players, will stop at nothing to continue playing their champion. They've probably been given the worst designed champion ever, and yet here they are seven years later still rocking their bird girl because they just like to play Quinn. And to me, that's pretty cool. I wish you all the best of luck in your next couple of ranked games, and I will see you all next time.